So as a microbiologist, my mission is to fight the bacteria that can make us sick. And to do that, we study our enemy. We learn about how bacteria normally live so that we can better plot their demise. But bacteria are tough. They have this coat of armor, this wall that protects them from outside threats. And in my research, I'm learning more about how bacteria expand this wall as they grow. And this information is valuable, because if we can find ways to stop bacteria from expanding, then we can better treat infection. So this wall that bacteria build, it's a lot like chain mail. It's pretty flexible, <laughs> and it keeps the insides in and the outsides out. And it's pretty strong. That's why our medieval knights wore it. But it does not render the bacteria invincible. And here's why. This wall is so unique that it shouts out, hey, I'm a bacteria. And being easily identifiable paints a huge target on your back when you're trying to invade the human body. And that's how a lot of our antibiotics work, is they can target this bacterial cell wall. And as you can see in this video, this effect is dramatic. These cells just rupture and die, but our human cells will be left alone. And these antibiotics are effective, but they are by no means foolproof. You've likely heard on the news about the rise of these superbugs. These are bacteria that are resistant to not one, not two, but dozens of different drugs. Infections that were once easy to treat with a course of antibiotics are now harder to get rid of. And there's a lot that we can do as a society to kind of slow that risk down. Namely, we can use our current antibiotics more wisely. But we need to have these powerful treatments. Um, but we have to keep in mind that there's an inevitable consequence of using them. And that if just one hardy bacteria survives the drug treatment, it's going to live on and infect others. So in essence, our antibiotic use is breeding the next superbug. And the fact is, we are in an arms race against bacteria. And in order to stay ahead, we need new treatments. But designing a new drug is a slow and expensive process. From start to finish, its estimated cost to bring one new drug, just one, to market is two and a half billion dollars. And this involves funding new ideas. You know, we have to generate um, new possible treatments all the way at the beginning. And then, if they show promise, they'll go through clinical trials. These are rigorous tests to make sure that drugs are both safe and effective. And finally, these drugs need to get regulatory approval um, before we can deliver them to a patient. And in this process, I want to highlight the role that basic research plays. So basic research is asking questions like, how does that work? And it involves a lot of fumbling around in the dark. You're searching for answers, and it's not clear where they might lead or how they might be useful. And for that reason, basic research doesn't always get the love or, or the funding that it deserves. But if we're going to come up with novel treatments, we need to generate novel ideas. We need basic research to study our enemy. And to give you an example of that, when bacteria invade our bodies, they have to multiply in number. They'll first double in size and then separate. And this happens so quickly and casually. But you can imagine that if I were to double in size right now, that this chain mail wouldn't be able to accommodate me. The question here is, how do bacteria expand when they're confined by this cage? And so in short, how that happens is bacteria have ways to alter their chain mail so that it fits better. They start first by cutting links into their own armor. This creates a gap where they can then insert new pieces. This breaking and building process together is how bacteria expand. And in our lab, we're studying the gritty details of how this happens. Why does that matter? So each step of this process is a new place where we can intervene with antibiotics. And if we want to generate novel treatments, then we need to go back and look on that basic research. We need to learn how our enemy works in order to better stop them. And I hope that through this example, you've seen how basic research can tackle big problems like antibiotic resistance. And I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Thank you.